Hey guys, I just wanted to show you my open world database add-on. I just want to walk through the setup of it, how it works, how we can convert existing scenes and also the file structure. So let's get started. So to begin with, we just need to find the open world add-on. As you can see here, it's the open world database add-on by this guy. Um, I'm working with version 1.3, which by the time this video goes live, that should be uploaded. Yeah, if you do have an older version than 1.3, you probably want to re-download it just to get some of the newer features that we're going to cover in a second. Um, yeah, go ahead and download this and add it. I've obviously already got it installed because this is the uh, the main repository for it. And let's take a look at a demo scene that I've kind of prepared. So this just has a directional light and an environment. I'm going to go ahead and add the open world database node type. So we have some settings here on the right. These are the size thresholds that a node needs to be to fit within a chunk size. These are the different chunk size definitions. And then this is the chunk range, which is obviously relative to these sizes. There's some other bits down here as well, so we can output some debug information as we go. We can assign a camera, although you don't actually need to do this. We'll, if, if one isn't assigned, then we try to find it within the, obviously within the editor, but also within the game itself. Uh, and if you click that button, then it just gives you some debug information. So number of nodes that we're keeping track of, basically. Then there's some batch processing options too. So this is the number of nodes and scenes that we uh, instantiate the the time limit for that, uh, and also the batch interval. So the, the, the gap in these seconds between us doing these batches. So let's go ahead and add something. I'm just going to start with uh, just an empty node actually. So you'll see that it's renamed it from just node to this. <laughs> so this is basically just to make that name unique and to avoid collisions. Godot already does this to a degree, um, but it only really works if another, um, sorry, if all of the nodes um, are loaded at once. So obviously for a large open world there might be a node with the same name you know, over there somewhere. So this just uh, tries to ensure that there's no collisions. However, I know that I'm only going to create one of these nodes here, so I'm just going to rename this to items and that name is basically the same as the UID uh, that's used internally by the open world database and I'm just going to go ahead and add something to this so I've got some scenes already I've got this gem scene I'm just going to drop it underneath items and there we go I can also just drop it straight into the editor and you'll see here it's added it, it's renamed it as part of that, and it's made it a sibling of the one that we had selected already. So I can drop a few more, I can drop one over there as well. Uh, but watch this. So you see there, as I go back, that one that's far away unloads, and these closer ones, they take a bit longer. That's the primary concept of this add-on. Now we can also rejig this a bit so you can move your nodes around within here. You could take them completely out of there if you wanted to. Um, if we also wanted to, we could actually add them completely outside of OWDB. So I could just drop it in here and you'll see this is not being tracked by OWDB, but let's just do a few. And what we can do is I can then select these and literally just drop them into the items node and boom they've all been managed by OWDB now so I can go ahead and move back and they should all unload and reload so let's try making a bit of a game so I've got uh, let me just delete these actually so I've got a terrain uh, which is just another scene so I'm just going to drop that into my demo scene So take a moment because it's procedural. I try and do everything procedural. <laughs> so this terrain, it's basically um, just some noise and it has collision applied to it. Uh, and then I've got this, this cool kind of uh, grass effect going on here with a, a, a GPU particle shader. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a few bits in here now. Uh, just click on this. Let's just select the item just so we make it a sibling. Now let's add some gems directly into the scene. 
There we go. There we go. There we go, we're editing our world. You can see these are loading and unloading as I move. I'm just going to put these underneath this items object, this items node, just so it's a little bit neater. Let's get our player. So I'm just going to put them in the main scene, because we always want the player. Probably should have just dropped it straight in the scene actually, let me just uh, delete that. And I'll drop the player there. And I'd like to introduce good old capsule guy. <laughs> and I've also got some enemies down here too, so uh, let me just drop one of them. So the enemies I do want to be managed by OWDB because obviously, and this this I think is where this add-on shines the most. Um, in a large open world, you're probably going to have hundreds of different enemies, and obviously you, you can't have them all being processed at the same time. You could load them all at the same time and put some tricks in there to like check distance every once in a while. The idea of this add-on is that you can basically bypass all of that. So I'm just going to add some enemy nodes. I'll do what I did earlier and just drop them straight onto the terrain. Drop one here, I'll drop one over there. Drop one over there, oop, nope, over there. And I'm just going to make a new node. And we'll call this one enemies. Take the enemies I just dropped and I'm going to put them in there. So now these are all being tracked. You see one of them unloaded because they're quite far away. So if I move over here, they'll load in now. I've just got some trees. So I'm just going to like that. I'm going to go ahead and drop a, drop a tree here, and a tree there, and you know, one over here. Uh, and again, I'm just going to move these into the uh, OWDB node. So let's make a new one. Please. Just pop them in there. Obviously I could do this directly, um, but what I sometimes find is if I select a sibling and then I move around, and that sibling unloads. It's not going to happen because it's a tree, it's quite big. <laughs> but when that sibling unloads, if I drop a new tree in, it it's not attached to OWDB, it just gets added to the root. Um, so I tend to just work on the root directly and then I just I just port them across afterwards if I can select it, that is. So I find this a little bit easier. But that also means if you have an existing scene that you've made with like, you know, hundreds of thousands of objects in it, um, you can just add your OWDB node, you know, set those initial settings that you want, and then literally just move all of your existing nodes and scenes into OWDB, and that's basically how you port your existing scene to be an open world database controlled scene. So if I go really far away, you can see it unloads. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm just going to save that, and I just want to show you the format that we use. So this is the OWDB format. It's pretty simple, I think. So you'll see here we have that trees node and then indented underneath that we have all of the trees. So basically the indents mean that this is a child of this node. And then each one is the name which is the same as the UID as far as OWDB is concerned. Then you've either got the node type, or in this instance for the trees, we have the scene file path. And then we have the position, the rotation, the scale, and the size. So that's the same here. Position, rotation, scale, size. And then lastly, any custom properties. So most of these don't have custom properties, but these gems, they do. I can actually change the color if I want to. So these are just properties which are exported by scripts. And if you change any other values, apart from anything to do with the transform, because that's managed by OWB, but if you change any other values as well, then that will be stored in these properties and applied when they load. You see here as well the enemy AI, we have a, a few properties here as well. Damage, cooldown, etc. But uh, this is quite handy just to see, I think, to get an idea of how it's all being stored. This is basically just kept in, in memory when the scene is loaded. And also it should be quite good for versioning, so if you use Git or if you have a team that are working on different parts of the scene, you should be able to quite easily merge these together. 
So I've made this basic scene. Oops, no. I've made this basic scene. Let's just go ahead and uh, try it out. So I'm just going to click play. Oh, I've got my player script attached. And my AI scripts are doing their thing. See that I added a, an AI really far in the distance, but they've not loaded in, which is great. I'm just going to collect these gems. Just walk around here. Take out this guy. And he's gone. <laughs> and yeah, I can just walk around this and you'll see stuff unload as I do. Oh, this guy just loaded in in the distance here, so I can go and take him out now as well. Obviously, this is a much simpler example, and um, I can probably fill this with some more trees. that's about it that's how you can use this and obviously you'll likely be able to create something that looks a little bit better but uh, yeah hopefully it's useful and hopefully we can get some more open world games or you know, games with larger levels in Godot I think it's my favorite genre so um is it a genre open world I guess it is yeah but yeah it'd be cool to see and yeah hopefully this helps if you guys like the project, if you wouldn't mind you know, doing the usual liking the video and everything and liking the post, but also if you don't mind starring the GitHub project, that'd be great. Um, I'll put the link in the description. That just helps me get new work in, which you know, helps me spend a bit more time on things like this. So that'd be really appreciated. And I've also got a Discord like everyone else. So if you want to ask any specific questions about the project or if you want to follow the development of my primary project, which is my game, that'd be cool too. But yeah, thanks everyone. Have a good day.